both my ice cream bases start with, with dogs. Micromanja, courageous cooking in a crab kitchen. We are in the middle of a heat wave and I need ice cream. So I'm gonna make my own which I love to do, and I'm gonna show you how to make your own ice cream, but not just your garden variety, vanilla and chocolate. I'm gonna make coffee ice cream and chai spiced ice cream, which has the same warm flavors of chai tea. So I'm gonna kind of make a coffee ice cream and a tea ice cream. And to bump it up a notch, I'm gonna put that ice cream between two delicious cookies and make myself a grown up ice cream sandwich. Both my ice cream bases start with the same ingredients. There is milk, heavy cream, and corn syrup in the pot. And in this little bowl, there is sugar, dry milk, corn starch, and a pinch of salt. Now, the reason why I put corn syrup in my ice cream base is it helps keep the sugars from crystallizing. It makes a very smooth ice cream. And the corn starch in the dry ingredients is going to help it thicken. Here's where things get interesting. For my coffee base, it's simple. It's a third of a cup of coffee beans. I use whole beans and grind them slightly. You can use ground coffee. This gets steeped in the base later after it's heated up. The chai spices are my favorite. I've got cardamom seeds, coriander seeds, some fennel seeds. I give them a little crush with my mortar and pestle. If you don't have whole seeds, you can use dried or ground of any of these products. And then I'm gonna tie them in my little bouquet garni. I'm gonna make like a little tea bag and steep that in there. I also have two whole cinnamon sticks that I've broken up and I've got half a vanilla bean that I've scraped. If you don't have a vanilla bean, you can use vanilla extract, but you're gonna add that after the ice cream base is cooked. Also, grated fresh ginger. Ugh. Putting the seeds in a damp piece of cheesecloth, then I'm gonna make a little, like a little tea bag for my, for my steeping liquid. Um, if you don't have cheesecloth, you can put the seeds right into the milk and cream, and then you have to strain it later, which I'm gonna do anyway, because I'm putting in whole vanilla bean and whole cinnamon and ginger. I've got both my ice cream bases on a medium heat. We wanna bring it just under a boil before we add all the dry ingredients. Now, a lot of ice creams are made with egg yolks as a custard base, which is delicious, it's a creme anglaise. But I really like the flavor and mouthfeel of this all milk base. It's creamy without coating your mouth. It has less cholesterol and I just really find it delicious. It reminds me of those Dixie cups when I was a kid. Sometimes this is called Philadelphia style and I think that's where it might have originated, but I'm not sure. Anyway, we're bringing these up to 180 degrees before we add the starches. And the starches are the corn starch, the sugar, and the dry milk. And we want to give these a little love before you add them because that way every bit of sugar is coated in all those other good ingredients and you don't get lumps. That's what we want to avoid, no lumps. All right, so we're at, oh, we're at, ready to go. You want it about 180 degrees, just below a boil when you add your starches. Now, you're gonna add and whisk, add and whisk. Don't just dump it all in. Do a little bit at a time, whisk it. Same thing for this one. I've got two whisks going because I've got two pots going. Add and whisk, add and whisk, because once the starches go in there, it's gonna start to thicken. And I'm gonna boil it, it's called a boiled custard, for about a minute. But it's not boiling yet, but I'm gonna just keep doing this, double fisted. Good exercise, I'm gonna work off that ice cream. All right, these have cooked for about a minute on boil. I'm gonna turn off the heat. I have to set up an ice bath to cool these off really fast. I'm making an ice bath to cool down my ice cream bases very quickly. You can skip this step, but you've got to cool down your ice cream base before you put it in the ice cream maker. Coffee ice cream base gets poured over the ground coffee beans, and that's gonna steep for a bit. Then, Still want this to steep in there. We're pouring this directly into the ice bath. So I have a bowl in a bowl. 
And you know what? You want to use metal, which conducts heat, and it also helps heat dissipate. You don't want to do this in glass or plastic because glass and plastic insulates. Metal lets the heat dissipate. All right, we're getting into the 50 degree range, which is getting cold enough to get into my ice cream machine. Now this is was a present to myself last year because I make a lot of ice cream, so I really needed this. This has a built-in freezer, so you can do ice cream after ice cream after ice cream because it keeps freezing. I love this machine, but it takes up a lot of space and it wasn't cheap. Another ice cream machine I have, because I have two. This is an old one I got years ago. This has a bowl that's in the freezer right now. I'm gonna turn my coffee ice cream in this to show you. And um, doesn't take up a lot of space on your counter. Costs under $100. It's a great ice cream machine if you love making your own ice cream. But if you have no ice cream machine, you can use a heavy glass Pyrex pan. Pour your cold ice cream base into that and then use beaters to whip it up and make ice cream. You go back and forth to the freezer with it. Or you can take your ice cream base and get it cold in the freezer and then put it in a Cuisinart or a food processor and, and make it nice and creamy. Lots of ways to make ice cream. I've got this machine set to 45 minutes, which I've found is the perfect time for churning ice cream in this machine. Every machine is different. Carefully, you don't want to pour any of the water in there. We're gonna pour in our base through a strainer so it catches all the vanilla bean and all the cinnamon stick. Don't want any lumpity lumps. Come on, go in. Gonna put the coffee ice cream base into that ice bath to get that nice and cool because it's still hot. Oh, there it is. Get this. And start. 45 minutes till ice cream. My chai ice cream's in the big ice cream maker. My coffee ice cream is going into this lovely little maker. See, this is the frozen bowl. The blade goes in there. The top goes on there. And then we pour this through a strainer because we don't want those browns in there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Gotta be patient. My coffee ice cream is gonna take about a half an hour to churn in this machine. If you have one of these machines, you, you know how long it takes. I think this ice cream is ready to come out of this churner because you want it soft enough that you can still scoop it into, oh yeah, baby. <laughs> you want it soft enough that you can still scoop it into a container, but not so thick that it's turned into butter. See how creamy and luscious and oh, just like that is what I love about this ice cream base. It does all of that with no egg yolks. All right, we're going to pop this in the freezer so it firms up a little bit and then we'll be able to scoop it and fill our ice cream sandwiches. I got a little impatient with the coffee ice cream. Look at how beautiful it is. It needs to harden up in the freezer, but I had to switch it from my small little ice cream maker to my, my heavy duty one because it wasn't freezing fast enough. The ice cream is getting solid in the freezer and it's almost time to build the sandwiches. Now, if you have a favorite cookie you like from the store, go and buy that cookie. If you have a cookie you like to bake, bake that cookie. I made snickerdoodle cookies, which I thought would go really well with the chai ice cream and chocolate cookies with the coffee ice cream. But you know, if you like brownies, have ice cream with brownies. If you wanna do it with fruit, do it with fruit, whatever floats your boat. I put a small tray in the freezer to get good and cold so that while I'm building the ice cream sandwiches, they get put on a cold surface. So let's give this a whirl. Hey, it's still a little soft, the ice cream, but that's actually kind of good because then we can go like this. We take a scoop of ice cream and we take another cookie, ice cream sandwich. Let's do that again. Scoop of ice cream. Cookie. Oops, and ice cream sandwich. Now, as you're building them, you're gonna wanna put them back in the freezer to get nice and cold. Now we're gonna build the coffee chocolate ice cream sandwich. It's still very soft. Ooh, it's still really soft. Ooh, 
See, that's almost too soft. And what's gonna happen is, oh, and I gotta get this right in the freezer. Cause <laughs> here it goes. Ah! Ooh, look at my grown up ice cream sandwiches. There's coffee ice cream with chocolate cookies and oh, I'm gonna try the chai snickerdoodle. <laughs> Cinnamony, gingery, amazing. Make yourself some ice cream sandwiches. Mm. Goodbye. Mike Romanja, courageous cooking in a crab kitchen.